We're about ready for the toss of the coin, and right before we do that, we'd like to uh, say that Calvert Hall has indicated to us that they are going to be starting an entire senior defense today, so they have some changes in their secondary, which we will get to as we get into the ball game. Nice gesture. Uh, it's very nice. I notice on this side of the field, uh, Scott Frederick and Bill Ryan are waiting to take out the Calvert Hall captain. The other side will be uh, Bob Blatsky and Jim Black, bringing in the captains from Delaney. Are they moving out now? And again, as we pointed out, it really should be interesting to note uh, whoever wins the toss as to what goal it should take to defend, because uh, this win has become a fact, as we uh, indicated before the game started. And it's really getting gutsy out here. Hey, Captain. Scott got a knock back, and uh, Captain Onager wants to introduce you to uh, Captain Trimble and Captain Wilson. Before we have to flip the coin, gentlemen, our own part of the day, I mean, excuse me, Bill Judge, Mr. Ryan, he'll have the time. If you want to know what time it is, ask Mr. Ryan, myself, or any official will be glad to give it to you. Mr. Black, he's a linesman, he'll have the change. Mr. Black, so he's your own part. Okay. So the official clock will be kept by Mr. Ryan. Okay. He's going to do the call for the what? I call him the end. Call the tail. It is a tail. You won the call. Lanny won the call. Which goal would you like to defend? Lenny will do the receiving on this. We're going to receive. Red's going to defend that goal, and they're going to kick. Okay, men, shake hands, play a good game. Ready to go. Now, gentlemen, you think about it. Uh, on a day like today, with the wind the way it is, maybe it would have been better to take the end you want rather than the ball. Yes, and I, I was speculating about that, Carl. It, it certainly was a possibility, but I, I believe that if they, they fail, they just want the ball. So they get him can score. Delaney, Notice that the official today referee is Scott Frederick, umpires Bob Lashley, linesman Jim Black, field judge Bill Ryan, another one of the fine crews assigned by Commissioner Ed Hargan, well balanced and efficient football teams all year out here. These are members of the Maryland Board of Football Officials, the local agency. It should be interesting to see what Delaney does, having chosen to receive the ball. Uh, they're going to have to obviously get an offensive going and get it going early here and uh, try and uh, cycle this uh, offensive weapon on the part of Calvin Hall. If they can get down a score early and uh, maybe to confuse the Calvin Hall team a bit, maybe they might stand a slice. That would be very important. And also, and also, Dennis, if you suggested earlier, it will be uh, significant to see what they can pass it off. Or whether they'll, they'll stay on the ground and just hope that they can do something there. As we look at these statistics, Fetter has outpassed Trimble in terms of number of attempts. Uh, 83 to 105, actually, Fetter's broken the 100 mark. And has completed 44 to Trimble's 41. So it could be an aerial display if they really get the ball going today. So it's that interception factor, as you had mentioned yeah. earlier, right? That, that, that's an important factor. Well, both, of these compounded today. both of these quarterbacks like to put the ball in the air, but uh, as we indicated, this wind is going to play an important part in today's game. Going back deep to receive there on your camera, 20 for Delaney is Najamian, and 49 is Eric Collins, and of course kicking off, we have a different kickoff person today. It has been Mike Haskell, number 65. Uh, we have a 72 here, which we don't have in Arasso. It's probably probably is ha uh, Haskell, but he just has a number change. We'll check into that. And the ball blows off the tee. We're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> Delaney, Delaney is not poised for, for a, a deep kickoff. Notice they're lining up somewhere around the 10-yard line or so. Yeah, they're anticipating a run back rather than ball going into the end zone. This ball should, should take a serious hook to the far side of the field as it's kicked off. And here we go with the ball game. In the air, moving towards the center of the field. They can find the Jamie at about the 20. Straight up the middle. The old wedge. And brought down. Now, this is going to be interesting, gentlemen. As I look across the field, there are no yard markers. That's well, we're going to have to do a little Very catch today. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, they'll keep the rest busy anyway. <laughs> That's correct. The 29-yard line, as I count it, if we have the 50 right in front of us, right. where they'll take off, take over. And not bad field position. Here they come. They're coming out now. First and 10. The eye set and move to the right to the deep back. Better the quarterback. Turn, looks to pass on the first set of downs. Keeps going out the outside. He's at three in the secondary. It's a foot race. One man to beat. And finally brought down deep inside of Calvert Hall territory. A nice run. Well, that's an option. Uh, you have the halfback waiting for the pitch, and the Calvert Hall end uh, floated out in the actually the quarterback floated out in that direction, and the quarterback cut up. That play has just been a tremendous surprise to Calvert Hall having come out and run a uh, quarterback option so soon. Here's better roll. There it is a good peak. Good option. No man there to turn the quarterback up at all. And what had happened? Two men, two men floated out with the pitch back. A good decision by quarterback Rick Fetter. 
Finally brought down by Troy Young. It's first and ten. Straight up the middle. Short game. Second and seven. Great dive play that the Zelva wing tee looks more like a, uh, a split tee offense. Or even close to a deer. Great dives and options so far. And it looks like Delaney got off to an early start has put uh, Calvin Hall off the guard and they're trying to uh, keep him that way. Uh, Calvin Hall's defense will be taxed down here. After Doug Amaker's short gain of three yards, it's second and seven, two setbacks behind the quarterback. Takes to the middle and better falls down. That'll put him back a, a yard or so. It'll be third and eight. Not a possibility of a few yards on that if he hadn't slipped. Yeah, we should point out this field is pretty muddy and uh, wet, so we might see uh, a lot of slippage today also. To be honest, it's an amazing condition when you consider the weather that we've had the last couple of days. Here's a big play for Delaney, third and about eight. Two setbacks behind the quarterback, better are Amaker and the Jamian. Snap, straight drop back, looks to the outside. A little dump off through the middle to... Amaker, he's close to the first down. Let's see where they mark it. Amaker taking the little dump pattern out of the backfield. Picks up close to that first down and we'll have a measurement, I believe. A well-run play. It looks close. It, from here, it looks as if uh, it might be very short. But a rough is still yet to indicate what the first down and not. He has had to replay. Here it is again. Nice little dump pass. The Kiso Banks. Holds him down, but it may be a little bit short. And we have the nope. measurement. No. Oh, there you they go. Got it. Fourth yep. and inches. I assume they'll go. Yep. I would think that they would. They, uh, they're moving the ball. And, uh, well, I, I thought he had okay correction on that. Not quite. It is. It is, uh, as we said originally, it looks like about an inch. We'll see the offensive line for the Delaney Lions. There they, are. they are Steve Wheeler, John uh, Nozomak, uh, Chuck Leonard, Greg Matthews, Dan Chavis, Scott Potterly, and Mike Armstrong. They've been up front and doing a good job so far, certainly. They've driven downfield about, they've gained about uh, 50 yards from their original point of scrimmage. And here are the defensive backs. Yep. Uh, actually, as you were, offensive backs, Al and Jamie and Doug Amaker, uh, Neil Alt, and Rick Fetter, quarterback. They alternate. One's 190, one's 150, one's 180, one's 140. I look for a Fetter uh, to hand the ball straight out the middle to Amaker, the big fullback. Two backs set behind the quarterback. He what? takes it himself and easily makes the first down. Got the call, and he's only 165 pounds. That was a, a good move by uh, for the back Setter, Setter. Rick Setter. Setter short time picks up the first down inside the 15 to the 14. First and 10. I have to say, up until this point, call surprised. Very surprised. I'd have to say so. This uh, Delaney front line obviously shown that they've come here and they mean business, and they're doing a the job. There's an amazing resemblance between Setter right. and our fellow Ed Rochelle at Loyola, the way he directs his squad, and also. Uh, our magnificent quarterback from Northwestern, the Kramer. Kramer. Don't forget Kramer. Kramer. Right. Yes. We have a timeout. I believe it's for the uh, Calvert Hall defense to get themselves together here. Ted Murray, the uh, offensive coach, Delaney, is in the huddle going over some possibilities at this point. A touchdown at this point would, would give them a tremendous lift, tremendous lift. On the other hand, Calvert Hall, of course, is, is, is holding up, holding that Hoping that they can stall it here. You'll note that we have some yard markers now. So yeah, so yeah, very helpful. Down the Half of them, of course, are blown off. <laughs> <laughs> One's up against the fence. Well, while these guys are huddled up on the sideline uh, discussing their strategies, I would think that what Delaney will want to do is to keep keep on with the short ground uh, coverage. You know, two or three yards at a time, just grinding it out. And consistently moving the ball downfield. Which is good, and until they're stopped, I think they're going to stay with what got them so far. Same two backs behind the quarterback, better. Now set up in a split backfield. The jump, and we have uh, an illegal procedure. Yeah. Let's see how they call it. Number 80 broke the uh, line of scrimmage, the neutral zone. Perhaps getting just a bit jumpy there because this Delaney offensive line, as I said, are, they're moving them out. Mike Smith, a little over anxious. That'll move the ball inside the 10-yard line, down to the 9. And Carl, that is, that is a, big a, one. a great break. That's a great break for Delaney. To get five yards free down here, that is a good. First and five from the 9. This is really surprising. Delaney haven't taken reception, and they're uh, just threatening already. Dive, run to the outside, tries to get to the outside. He's hung up as Wilson, Butch Wilson, got to him initially. 
spun him around and knocked him down for a little or no gain. It's still five yards to go. That was a little tailback style. Uh, the Jamian, he's, he's a speedster on the Delaney team. He's uh, basically the only speed they have in that uh, among their backs. And good enemies. effort on his part to spun out of the, yes. out of the arms of Wilson. Unfortunately, he didn't get too far, but it's a good effort. Split back behind the quarterback from Jamian to the left. Monomaker straight behind the quarterback. Turn, looking to pass. Moves up the middle, escapes the rush, and Amaker was just not looking for that pass. The outlet pass was there, but Amaker was moving his way up the other. It's an incomplete pass, and it'll now go to third and six. Yeah, Fader found himself in trouble. He really wanted to dump it off. Unfortunately, Amaker had his back to him. Had he turned around, the ball may have been catchable. I think Amaker had presumed that uh, at that point, the quarterback was going to run with the ball, and he started to move into a blocking posture. Well, that was a short pass you were talking about. And that's one of the few times that uh, Delaney failed to move the ball. The ball is on the 10-yard line. We have an over-shifted line here. Having a little confusion on Delaney. Third and six. Center, the quarterback, takes that. Great drop back pass. Being rushed. Being rushed. Looks like he might get out. And he does. Back at the 23-yard line. Under a pile of Calvert Hall defenders. And that is more typical of this Calvert Hall line. Yeah, we've pointed out before that this Delaney team has seen his quarterback sack 12 times over the year. And uh, I guess it was just a matter of time before Calvin Hall could figure out exactly what they were doing and make the necessary adjustments, and that time it paid off. Now, Kevin Burge was in there, and here's Burge's statistics for the year. Quite impressive. Number 84, Kevin Burge. Here's a long field goal attempt from the 27, 28. That'll make it 38. It's a line drive off the toe, off the side of his foot into the end zone, and Calvert Hall will take over on the 20. And they have held, and, and you got the feel Calvert Hall feels good, and we'll come back rather sprightly on offense. Yeah, we saw Delaney take the reception and move downfield. They were threatening, and it looked like they were going to move the ball inside. But as we pointed out, Calvert Hall able to recover, make the necessary adjustments. Notice, notice, the, notice the wind blowing that flag around, and that, that in part accounted for that failed field goal. On the other hand, you got to give Delaney a lot of credit for moving that ball as they That's did. That's for sure. That's for it's sure. got to give them something of a lift if they can play defense down and hold Calvert Hall to a, uh, to a punt situation, force him to punt on fourth. And we're about ready to go with Calvert Hall taking possession for the first time today. The quarterback is Charlie Trimble. Two backs now rotate behind the quarterback. McPherson and Harris. The handoff to McPherson straight up the middle. Two yards, second and eight. McPherson, the workhorse on his Calvert Hall team, he's responsible for over 500 yards alone. This kid can do a little bit of everything. There's a nice tackle by John Nosmack, who's uh, also the offensive ball player that you've been talking about, Carl. And one of the captains, too. Second and eight. Just over there, 20, the 22, rotation of the backs again, a new fullback, Tim Healy's in. Great dive up the middle to Healy. Another short gain of about two yards. Make it third and five. Well, for two downs, you have to say that Delaney has been impressive on defense. 7.25 left to go in the first period. There's no score. A little tough to get going on a day like today. It must be around 30. Pretty chilly, and the wind doesn't help. <laughs> They're making it third and six. Setbacks. Behind the quarterback, motion to the far side to Sanders, a handoff to Sanders. He runs into a defender, but he's still on his feet, still on his feet, and he makes the first down up over the 35 to the 36. Oh, what a fine, determined drive. He was stopped three times. Looks Del like kept his feet turning and, and uh, managed to pick up the first down with ease. It looked like Nosmack somehow had his back turned and uh, he was the back of him. Just keeps moving. So stopped at least three times. Good effort. That's a fine run. Mike Sanders or have that. First and ten. Motion by Garrick McPherson. Here's McPherson with the ball to the outside. Can he turn the corner? No. Brought down nicely by number 31, Bruce McLeod. Good one-on-one -on -one open field tackle. Excellent. Still, Excellent move. Still second and ten. And we notice the running fullbacks. Tim Healy now in the ball game, and out comes Tony Harris. And here's the offensive line for Calvert Hall. Wilson, Nichols, Wheeler, Kaka, Farber, Yaburik, and Reynolds. The offensive backfield, McPherson, Sanders, Carter, Trimble. And you might add Healy to that, and Harris. Second and still 10. 
Turns it straight, gives up the middle. He's free in the secondary. Once again, it's Healy, still on his feet, all the way down to the 40-yard line. First and 10, Coward Hall. And I think the success on that play was the excellent fake that was given on the part of this quarterback. It really uh, fooled the entire defense. That was, that was misdirection, misdirection. The quarterback moved yeah. as if he were going to pass. He moved back quickly and just a fine run. Right. Jimmy Healy has picked up a big first down, and now Calvert Hall's on the move. At the Delaney 40-yard line, first and 10. Third, straight give off up the middle. McPherson trying to get to the outside, still on his feet. And moves up close to another first down. We'll see where they spot it. Howard Hall backs have shown a tremendous propensity for skillful running, Carl. First down. Yes, that play developed into a lot more yardage than one would have thought it would have gone. He came this close to being tackled at least three times right up on the line. Give credit to that offensive line. They're opening some very large holes in there for these backs to run through. And we have a first and ten. Charlie Tribble, the quarterback. And right behind him right there is Harris. Harris. Turn to get straight up the middle to Harris, a short game, second and seven. Tony Harris, one of the three rotating fullbacks. Now let's see if they do the same pattern, gentlemen. They bring their own play in. That, that's happened a number of times. Notice uh, the, the uh, Delaney secondary is being tacked because they've had to come up the last four plays exactly. to make the tackle. Back set up behind the quarterback dribble. The backfield, they rotate two different backs in there. Saunders and Healy. Turn. Get to Saunders, trying to get to the outside. There's some one person to beat, and he cannot do it. Big number 55, John Nozmack, makes that tackle. Playing both ways, says John. And obviously doing a fine job. He's been on several in uh, several plays on defense. Here's a defensive line of Delaney, Eric Collins, James Alf Leonard, Chuck Leonard, and Steve Wheeler. These guys have got their work cut out. And their linebackers, Mike Totchny, uh, Doug Amaker, and John Nuzmack. 4 14. Oh, the the first back, period. Mike McQuaid, Rick Fader, Bruce McLeod, and Sal Nuzmack. So is everything. <laughs> That's a Jamie. Yeah, I, I saw the Jamie. Okay, it was a Jamie. Great dive up the middle. Jay Carter headed for the end zone and finally brought down at the five yard line. First and ten and goal for Calvert Hall. Well, we're really seeing an interesting turnaround here, but let me have it taken the opening kickoff and marched all the way down the field. Well, they would have scored having been turned away by the Calvert Hall team, and now Calvert Hall is on the move, having come uh, to the front of 60 yards so far. Here's that play again. It was a trap. Finally brought down Jay Carter. Jay Carter took advantage of that, of that trap and just cut his man down, and there was a hole big enough for a truck. Two backs behind the quarterback. Turn to give straight up the middle. Still driving, still driving. Close to the goal line. Let's see what they call it. Touchdown. Touchdown, Coward Hall. So there we see Delaney was initially threatening at this end of the field, and Coward Hall having uh, thwarted there up as he field goal, taking the ball and moving and power left the field and going in for the score. Take a look at Healy's touchdown of five yards. There it is. It's there is a straight guy. dive. Great blocking. Just power blocking at the hole. It's important to note he never gave up. He kept driving. Yes. You'll note today that uh, Chip Barnes is going to do the holding for Kirk Maggio's extra point because we know that Philly Mejica is out with an injury. So they'll try for the kick here to make it seven. Kick is up. It hooks to the left. It's no good. And the score is six to nothing. Cover all. Like someone got a hand on that kick and on that yes. We'll be right back. That was flat in line. Have you ever dreamed of cruising in crystal clear waters above the Healy, the extra point is wide to the left, and Calvert Hall leads six to nothing. We've just been told by the officials that it's 4.15 left to go in the first period. And now Haskell will do the kicking off. Mike Haskell. There's the kick. It's coming to the near sideline. And we have a whistle. Whistle. Even before the balls run back. Here we have an offside, Carl. Bob Blatchley, the official up right on the line, has signaled an offside against, Car uh, against Calvert Hall. Eric Collins probably wondering what he'd done wrong when he caught the ball. <laughs> They're blowing the whistle. I just caught it. He'll move it back five yards. And Mike Haskell will re-kick. 
Five yard penalty, we kick. So just a couple of linemen eager to get downfield to start it out just a bit too soon, and consequently it's going to cost them five yards. Three deep men to receive this ball. The Jamian, and the middle is the Jamian to the, his left. We see Collins, Eric Collins, and to his right, Doug Amaker. Doug is also a very fine lacrosse player. We did one of their games last year on Caltech against Towson, and Doug was very impressive that day. And here's the kickoff. Way up in the air. Once again, coming to Collins, but now looking back in the middle to the Jamian, who takes it at about 30, feeling his way up the middle, finally brought down at the 35, where Delaney now gets a chance to take over first and 10. Delaney in good field position by virtue of the penalty which was assessed against Calvert Hall, and then the high but relatively short kickoff. It should be interesting to see what type of strategy they employ in this particular series. Yeah, in the last series, they ran and passed. I'm sure they're going to start running and, and uh, see what they can do, and uh, waiting for another option play, perhaps to the uh, to their left side. Well, well Calvert Hall haven't gone in and scored first. They've got to alter the game plan just a bit. Two backs set behind the quarterback better. Oh, by the left offensive guard. Dan Chavis. That last touchdown, uh, as they mark off the penalty, Tim Healy's five yard run. 10 play, 80 yard drive. Very nice drive, Calvert Hall. Scott Frederick indicating the infraction. We're ready to go. First and 15 at the 30. Split backs behind the quarterback better. Great dive up the middle. The Jamie for little or no gain. Still about second and make it 14. The Calvert Hall defenders just stood up that front line and he really ended up running into the back of his own front line. And how it just was nowhere to go. There was no hole there at all. That was purely a testing play. I don't think they're going to run that play very often this afternoon. They run it three times and had, had very little success. Even on the drive that, that took him down to the uh, about the 14 line, 14 yard line. Once again, two backs behind the quarterback, second and 14. This handled ball picked up quickly by Better. They cannot afford to waste it down there. Third and 15. That's a bad break. Looks like he never got the ball cleanly from the center on that. It wasn't a matter of him pulling away and having lost the splitting. Just never really had good control of the Actually, ball. You know, a lot of these Delaney boys are playing both ways, and today I would say that that's an advantage. They're keeping warm. No, normally, normally we feel that it's a disadvantage because you're playing so long, but I think today they're, they're going to stay stay in the game and, and remain warm. Put back behind the quarterback better. Straight drop back pass. Looks downfield, a little Three. dump pass the outside. A little bit high, and Sally Jamie cannot handle it, and they'll have to punt. And even if he had Carl, it was well covered. Now we're going to see the wind for the first time today have an effect on this punt. The punter normally is uh, Bruce McLeod, number 31. We'll see if he's back there. It's going to be a test for Bruce. Yes, and of course, the man who normally does all of the receiving for Calvert Hall, Garrett McPherson, is deep. There he is on your screen. Now we see Tim Armstrong, number 34, out there. For some reason, he's funny. And a relatively good punt into the wind. Dies at the 33, rolls down inside the 32, where Garrett McPherson will let it roll. It's a decent roll, too. And a good punt. So Calvert Hall takes over on their own 32. And Delaney is going to want to get their team to keep up together and get it together right now and try to stop this Calvert Hall team from once again moving down the field and, uh, and at least threatening to score. They were very successful in last drive, moving the ball, a good mix of running players, and uh, a pass when they thought it was necessary to do so. And made not one mistake. Not one mistake. A very exactly. consistent drive. Conk is asking for the ball to be wiped off. Today, when it gets slippery, uh, that ball can get a slick spot on it, and you can't get a handle on it. There so are there... spots on the field that, that would, uh, because of the soft muddy spots. Overall, you're right, the field is fine, but there are a couple of spots that, that would create a, a muddy slippery ball. That last punt hit like a chip shot. It certainly did. It's flatted. The officials are wiping it off and they're ready to go. And here we go. They're the cheerleaders. Very warm, I'm sure, today. Two backs up behind the quarterback. Triple. Turn to give to the second back through the hole. It's Sanders. Sanders for a quick seven. Second and three. Good effort on his part. You get the feeling that Tower Hall is not about to throw a pass. Oh, 
one thing you will notice, the size of the players on Calvert Hall versus the size of the players on Delaney, very evident as we see them stand next to each other out on the field. A lot of beef on Calvert Hall team, a lot of beef. Straight behind the quarterback, Jay Carter, and to his right, McPherson. Take up Sanders, and we have a whistle, another motion. We'll listen to the referee tell us what it is. As we have it wired, and that's the quarter. The end of the quarter, it's six to nothing, Calvert Hall. Bud Schmidt Buick wants you to compare his.